what is the relationship between taxes, income, and the hair? We know what taxes are. We know what income is. We may also know what hair is. And for those who don't know, hair is the labbit that dwells in the forest. I know someone is asking, why are we talking about taxes, income, and hair? The reason will become apparent as we progress in the session. But there is one thing you need to remember. Taxes are based on income. Without income, there cannot be taxes. Income tax is based on the income. Equally, even value-added tax is also based on income. How much income did you generate in that one year of income? And from that, we can be able to establish how much value-added tax you should have collected. When you're talking about domestic excess duty, still, it relies on the income that you generated in that year of income. Because income is from sales, and taxes are based on sales. In this session, we are going to talk about the income. Because for you to pay tax, you need income. But where are you going to get the income from? And once you get the income, you give part of that income to the government. I know someone is asking, why do we need to give the government part of our income? This is because the government contributes in your generation of income. And that is why we tell taxpayers, if you want to continue making money, you need to pay your taxes. If you don't pay taxes, then the government does not have money. And when the government does not have money, it does not pay its suppliers. And because the government buys the most products from the market, when the government is not procuring, the economy comes to a standstill. So in actual fact, when you're paying tax, you're actually helping yourself. If you want to do business tomorrow, pay your taxes. But that is a story for another day. Today, we are talking about taxes, income, and hair. Taxation is the broad term, but under taxation, we have various tax systems. What are the taxes that we are talking about? We are talking about value-added tax. You know, value-added tax is the tax that is levied on the value that has been added. For example, if you buy potatoes from the farm, there is no value-added tax. But the minute you buy potatoes, peel them, process them, and sell them as chips, then you have added value and will be expected to charge or to levy value-added tax. When we are talking about tax, we are also referring to domestic excise duty. We all know that domestic excise duty is about levying tax on excisable products. For example, alcohol, betting, tobacco, and others. When we are talking about tax, we are also talking about custom taxes and duties. Everything that you bring into this country is subject to custom duties and taxes unless specified. And always remember that our custom duties and taxes are harmonized in the East African community. That means whatever custom duties and taxes are charged or levied in Kenya, they are also levied in Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, and all other East African community countries. The other tax that we are referring to is income tax. We all know what income tax is. However, there are many methods of collecting income tax. We have installment tax, 
we have advanced tax, we have beholding tax, we have pay as you want, and many other methods of collecting income tax. Anytime during this session, when we mention the term taxes or taxation, we are basically referring to these four tax systems. That is value added tax, domestic excess duty, customs taxes and duties, and income tax. I hope I have not confused you and I hope you are not lost. But if you are lost, do not worry. We are going to find you. Because we must move together. This subject is very important. We have talked about income. We have talked about taxes. But what about hair? What is the relationship between hair and taxes? To illustrate the relationship, we need to look at a story. We have always said one thing. Tax is a story. And there's a reason why we say that tax is a story. I know someone is asking, how can tax be a story? Tax is a story that is told using data. That is business data. Tax is a story because the figures that you get for one year of income are summaries. Those summaries tell a story and that story is for one year of income. And one year of income, it is 12 months. Every time when you look at the tax figures, those figures will tell you a story. And the story is about what happened in the business in that year of income. Why it happened, how it happened, who was involved, when it happened, and where it happened. That tax figure is a story about the business in the year of income. I know someone at this moment is asking, how can the tax figures be stories? Tax figures are stories. And always remember, there is a story behind the story. The tax figures that you see is the big story. But behind the big story, there are small stories. Tax is a big story with many small stories. And those small stories are in sales, purchases, deliveries, stocks, payments. There are very many small stories in the big story of tax. Let us illustrate. Imagine the turnover figure that you find for a company for one year of income is a whole story. That figure tells you the story of what was sold from the beginning of the year of income to the end of the year of income. It will tell you the products that were sold, it will tell you the prices, how those products were delivered, and how the payments were made. The story does not end there. It will also tell you what the company had to sell. And of course, what the company had to sell, the company must have purchased. That is what we are talking about, tax being a story. To help us understand the relationship between taxes, income, and hair, we are going to use a story and this is a story about hunting a hare. For most of us who grew up in the village, we have fond memories of hare. Why? Because boys in the village occasionally went to hunt hare. And when the hare was hunted, all the children knew one thing. It was time for us to eat very delicious meat, very soft meat. Parents did not eat hair meat. Boys are the ones who went hunting hair. And this did not only happen in my village. I think it happened all over the country. And I think it still happens, especially in the rural areas. This is one of the activities that boys in the rural areas engage in. Apart from the fun of it, remember there is no boy who went to hunt alone. They always used to go in a group. 
because apart from being an activity that boys would enjoy, there are very many lessons. And those lessons, they carry them into adulthood. So if you never hunted a hare, there are some life lessons that you did not learn. But don't worry. It is never too late. This session is for you. When boys went hunting, they did not just wake up and head to the forest. No. Hunting of hair is not a sporadic activity. And when we look at the activity, we can pick four steps that the boys used to engage in so that they can bring home one big hair. Let us look at the four steps. And the first step was to gather and decide they were going to hunt. Every important activity starts with a decision. In actual fact, it is every activity starts with a decision. And without deciding that they were going to hunt, they would never attempt the hunting game. They had to decide and agree that they were going to hunt. And for them to make that decision, they needed to come together and decide as a team that they were going to hunt on that day. During that meeting, they decided on several things. They decided on why they were going to hunt, who was going to be in the team, how they were going to hunt, when they were going to hunt, and where they were going to hunt. The decision was made in form of a conversation, and these questions were asked, and these questions were answered. They may not have been aware exactly what they were doing, but it was normal that before boys went hunting, they would gather together and have a conversation. And from that conversation, they would go to the next step. The next step was brainstorming a plan. And the plan was about where to go and hunt. We have all been told that failure to plan is planning to fail. And what the boys did is a good example of how important a plan is. Every time that the boys planned their hunting game, they were successful. But every time when they never planned, they were not successful. So before the boys embarked on the hunting game, they would sit down or stand at a corner, brainstorm amongst themselves. And occasionally, when a grown-up was passing by, they would seek guidance from the grown-up. And the grown-up would give the guidance free of charge. There are many things that boys learned. And they never learned in the classroom. They learned by doing things practically. After planning the hunting game, the boys moved to the third step. And that step was implement the plan. When they came together to make the decision, they had an idea. From the idea, they had a plan. From the plan, it is time for action. And the time for action is to implement the plan. And this is what they did. They normally left the compound and they went to where they had an idea they would find the hair. And they were very sure about finding the hair because maybe previously they had hunted in the same place or they had spotted a hair or several of them in the same location. So that is where they would go. Before they left the homestead, they already had an idea where most likely they would be able to find a hare. And when they went there, sometimes they were lucky. Other times they were not. But most times they were lucky. Because it is not one boy who was hunting. It was a group that was hunting. Remember, we have been told that if you want to walk fast, walk alone. But if you want to walk far, walk with others. And in this particular case, what we can say, if you want to hunt a rabbit successfully, hunt with others. But if you do not intend to hunt a rabbit successfully, hunt alone. In which case, you will walk back home with nothing. After hunting the hare, and assuming 
that they were successful, they moved to the fourth step. And the fourth step was that they brought home the hair. And after they brought it home, they proceeded to slaughter it and share the meat amongst themselves. In most cases, they used to roast the meat and share the meat amongst themselves and also any other children that were around. So those are the four steps of hunting a hare. The first step was about making the decision on whether to go and hunt or not. The second step was about planning, laying an elaborate plan that they were going to follow in hunting the hare. The third step was about implementing the plan that is taking action. And the fourth step was the results, that is the hunted hare, which they would normally bring home. This story explains the tax story. Income is the hair, and remember, taxes are based on income. When the boys went hunting for the hair, they went to hunt for income. When they brought it home, that was at the end of their year of income. And they never ate the meat alone. They had to share the meat. And in most cases, they shared with the other children. Let us look at tax. Taxes are charged on income. Or they are based on income. For you to pay tax, you must be having income. And the income is normally generated by you. You as a taxpayer. Either as an individual taxpayer or as an individual taxpayer. So it is the taxpayers who generate the income. And on that income, tax is levied. Have you ever wondered where income comes from? Income is generated by individuals. And this is when individuals sell their services to sell. And this is when they are self-employed in organizations that they own or organizations that are owned by others. Every single income is generated because a service has been sold. And that service is sold by individuals. Because no matter what happens, in every process, there is an individual. There is a human being who is doing some work. Therefore, human beings are the generators of income. For the income to be generated, there has to be a conducive environment. And that environment is created by the government. What am I saying? For you to be able to generate any income, there must be a conducive environment. And that environment is created by the government. All individuals sell their services. They sell their services to create or to generate income. For the individuals to be able to sell their services, they need a good environment. And that environment is created by the government. Please note, I have used the term government three times. This is because you need to understand and appreciate the role of the government when you generate an income. If the government is not creating a conducive environment, it's going to be very difficult for you to generate any income. That is a very ideal situation where the government creates a conducive environment and the taxpayers generate income. Remember, these are expectations. The government is expected to create a conducive environment so that the taxpayer can generate income and based on the income, the taxpayer is going to pay taxes. But does the government create a conducive environment? Some of the policies that the government has in place, do they create conducive environments for the taxpayer to generate income? Many times the answer is no. Many things happen. And there are reasons why those things happen. 
uh, that is how those things happen. That is when they happen, where they happen, and who does those things. And this creates a very sad affair. There are very many things that happen and they result in the government's failure to create a conducive environment for the taxpayers to be able to generate income. And this is a very sad affair. Remember that the income is the hair. And the hair hunters are the taxpayers and the government. In the last couple of years, I have listened to the noise in this country. Every time I've heard about the tough economic times, and we agree, times have been hard. We've heard about lack of jobs. Many people are unemployed. And even those ones who are employed, they are underemployed. We have heard many times about the cost of living. We have heard about the finance bill. We have heard about the finance act. We have had numerous discussions about the tax laws in this country. Laws are expected to be made so that they can facilitate business. But in the last but in the last couple of years, some of the laws that the government has made cannot facilitate business. So we have a case of two hunters. One is hunting, but the other one is not doing their part. If the government is not doing its part, is it possible for taxpayers to generate income? And that income is going to be the basis of tax. When the government does not do its part, what ends up happening is that there is no conducive environment, taxpayers cannot generate income, and if taxpayers are not generating income, then paying tax becomes very difficult. Time and time again, we have told taxpayers to pay tax because when they pay tax, the government will be able to create an environment for the taxpayers to continue doing business. If the government does not create a conducive environment, what ends up happening is that when taxpayers are not able to pay tax, the government has no tax to collect. It is not a win-win situation. It is a lose-lose situation for everyone. For the taxpayers to be able to generate any income, the government must create that environment. Without that, everyone loses, including the government. In the discussions that have been in the country, I have not heard about the decisions, I have not heard about plans, I have not heard about implementation of plans. All I have heard about how to share the hair. But when it comes to the decisions to go and hunt, the plans to go and hunt, and also the actual and also the actual hunting, I have not had that conversation. All I am hearing is about who takes what part of the hair. One of the parties, and in most cases the government, proposes to take the juicy parts. That is the ribs, the legs, and the skin. And the government intends to leave the ears, tails, nails, and other useless parts of the hair to the other party. And that other party happens to be the taxpayer. And after listening to the discussions, I am forced to ask this question. Where is the hair? Where is the income? Growing up in the village was a lovely experience. Because what we saw, we learned from that. And that is those who are willing to learn. We learned about the what, we learned about the why, we learned about the how, we learned about the who, we learned about the when, and we also learned about the where. 
we learned about the five W's and the one H. These are very important questions that if small boys in the village asked these six questions, who are we in this day and age not to ask these six questions for every decision that we make? Whether it is a personal decision or a business decision, we must get into the habit of asking these six questions because asking these six questions will help us make the decision, plan, implement the plan, and also get results. As a taxpayer, your most important goal for your business is to grow your business. But remember, as much as you're growing your business, the government wants part of your income in form of taxes. It is important for you to ask yourself, what are the goals that you want to achieve? Once you do that, and we always propose that you take a pen and paper. As a taxpayer, there are several questions that you need to ask yourself. And they are basically not even five, four questions. We reduce it to four questions. We always propose that you take a pen and paper and ask yourself these questions. Write down the questions and you also write the answers so that you can start seeing a clear picture. The first question you need to ask yourself is where do you want to go in the next one year, in the next two years, in the next five years, in the next ten years? Write down where you want to take your business. Most likely you're going to have your major goals and your mean goals. The second question that you need to ask yourself is, where are you at this particular moment? Where is your business on the journey that you want to take? Where is your business in relation to the goals that you have set? Are you halfway done? Are you quarter way done? Are you at the starting point? You need to ask yourself that question. The third question that you need to ask yourself is how will you get there? You must have a plan. You must chart your course. What route are you going to take towards achieving your goals? And on the way, what mean goals are you going to achieve so that you can decide you are on the right path? You need to write down the path that you are going to follow. The last question that you need to ask yourself is, who is going to do what? Is it going to be a own journey or are you working with others? Remember the saying, if you want to walk faster, walk alone. But if you want to walk far, walk with others. Who else is going to be in your journey? You need to list down the people who are going to be on or in your journey. And that is how you are going to grow your business. Once you are able to grow your business, you will not find paying tax difficult. One of the things that we have found over time is that people find it difficult to pay tax because they do not generate adequate or enough income. They are struggling to generate income and the government wants part of that income. For example, for example, if your taxable income is 1 million and you're paying tax at 10%, your take home is going to be 900,000. And if your taxable income is 10 million and you're paying tax at 10%, you're going to take home 9 million. There's a big difference between 900,000 and 9 million. One of the strategies that you can take so that you stop struggling when you're paying tax is to make sure that you're generating enough income. Be on the lookout for our video on why taxpayers struggle with tax. Remember, after writing down the answers to the four questions, it is important for you to be an active taxpayer. Don't just sit 
when you hear that the government is asking for inputs, for example, the budget proposals or any other policies that are going to affect you as a taxpayer, be among the first. Go out there. Give your inputs because the decisions that the government is going to take are going to affect you. As an active taxpayer, always ask yourself when, who, how, what, why, and where. Those are very important questions that you ask for every decision that you make, whether it relates to tax, business, or anything else. And remember, to hunt a hare, you need to decide to plan to implement the action and also to get the results. And the hair is the income. Everybody needs income. You need income. The government needs income. We have come to the end of this session. And we have discussed the steps that boys normally used to take when going to hunt. And what they used to go and hunt is a hair. And we have equated that hair to the income that we seek to generate. We have also given you the way forward what you need to do so that this session can benefit you. We have always said it is not enough for you to listen to what we are saying, but you don't implement. Always have a take home, something that you can go and implement. That way you will not have wasted your 30 or so minutes. In case there is any step that we have missed about the hare hunting game, please go to the comment section and let us know. We have a lot of resources for our leaders. You can also visit our website. The link is in the description. And if you do not want to miss anything that we upload, please make sure that you subscribe so that you are notified every time we upload. And in case there's any topic that you'd want us to cover, please feel free to leave us a message in the comment section. You can also send us an email. Our email address is in the description. Let us work hard, make money, pay taxes, and thrive. Your presenter, as always, was Dr. Wakaguyu. Let us continue learning about business, and I wish you all the best in your business. Don't worry, you will succeed. And till next time, stay well.